Oh, Borderlands 1. My personal history with the series began with the first one. No surprise. I have many fond memories of playing the game co-op over Xbox Live with my friend who I shouldn't name as he's really not a good guy and I haven't talked to him since like ninth grade when he moved, which probably was a good thing, but who cares? Anyways, when he wasn't punching holes in his wall, we were playing Borderlands and other games. You know, this is my 12-year-old Xbox squeaker days of Black Ops 1 and 2 trolling, Halo 3 and Reach, and Modern Warfare. But above all else, I fondest memories of Borderlands 1 and 2 and all the DLC. Me and my little edgy friend would stay up all night playing these games from dusk until dawn. And my mom would be pissed when she found out I did it on a school night. And we would pray for snow days so we could just play more and more. We exploited glitches, farmed legendaries, watched every video, awaited every DLC, speculated on the next DLC, the next character. We did everything you could imagine with Borderlands 1 and Borderlands 2. And with the recent announcement of Borderlands 3... I decided I want to play Borderlands 1 and 2 again. And I don't want to talk about the pre-sequel just yet, but I'll get to it. Let's start off with the story. The story begins with, well, you're a vault hunter. You arrive on a bus, the kick-ass intro with Cage the Elephant, and... You're greeted by Marcus. There's four characters, Mordecai, Lilith, Brick, and Roland. All four vault hunters ready to hunt the mythical vault on Pandora. A planet that is much like Mad Max world. You know, there's bandits and desert. Bad guys, skags, many creatures. But as soon as you get off the bu bus, you're interrupted by a digital weird blue girl that captures your screen and well she's kind of your guide throughout the world she's your main story person who tells you where to go what to do the main story plot missions as their side quests and side missions with their own little stories she guides you through the important shit and gets you to the vault she is your, she uses you to get to the vault. And, you know, as you go through the story and help and meet characters with cutscenes and all of that, you eventually arrive at the mythical vault after you find out Atlas, the gun corporation, has discovered location of vault and has stolen the key that you spent the whole game making. Anyways, you get to the vault, and you're fighting alien Iridian creatures. Guardians, they are called, but they're just aliens. Anyways, you get to the vault, and it's a giant spaghetti monster. <laughs> well, spoilers, I guess, for a ten-year-old game. But, the Atlas leader, who happens to be a siren, much like Lilith, the Firehawk, opens the vault, and is pierced through the stomach by the Mike Wazowski interdimensional monster that is made of spaghetti. And you fight the boss, and that is the vault. You beat him, or it, and game over. <laughs> That's the end of the plot. The vault opens. It's a giant dimensional monster who looks like Mike Wazowski, and you beat him. He drops some loot, and then zoom out. The lady who was helping you was a Hyperion satellite, and they've hijacked Claptrap and turned him into a robot assassin. Overall, the story's funny and, you know, whatever. Gets a little serious. The writing isn't as good as it could be, I suppose. And overall, the story's unique and fun and everything like that. And the characters you meet are great. You know, Scooter, um, Tannis, Claptrap, definitely, uh, Dr. Zed, Marcus. They're all funny and great characters, and they're expanded upon in the sequel. 
but this overall story is a little too bare bones and not really as funny as Borderlands 2 will be. But for the first in the series, it's pretty good. Let's get on to the gameplay. Now, it's really the first of its kind, in a sense. It's an RPG Diablo FPS hybrid that just fucking works. Character abilities, gun gameplay, just everything there works well. And it's such a unique blend, but the blend works so well and it's so addicting. Your main objective is getting loot. And there's different rarities from white to orange, well, pro pearlescent. And they each have their own unique stats. The better you go, the better the weapon is in terms of rarity. And also the rarity weapons that have red text, they have a chance to do a special effect, such as shooting a unique gun pattern or shooting a ex massive explosion or something like that. Or shooting rockets like some shotguns can do. There's multiple gun types from rocket launchers to revolvers to sniper rifles and they're all useful they're all good they're all standard FPS and then you have classes siren berserker um, hunter and commando I think it's commando whatever Roland is they're all just the separate four characters I mentioned in the story segment and they have their own unique skill trees, and you get skill points by leveling up after level 5. And there's three skill trees you can level into. They all affect the gameplay. They all give you stat bonuses like a standard RPG would, where instead of leveling up and you just get a bonus to dexterity or something, the only thing that increases automatically is your health and your, I think, damage maybe. But your health and your, no, not damage, your health and your shield capacity stats increase and your damage only increases with a new gun and guns are leveled you have to be a certain level to hold be able to use that gun or use that equipment and the better higher level the more damage and better it is and rarity all like that and then skill points you level in skill trees and you can do crazy combinations Lilith can level into where she can daze an enemy with her bullets and they slow down they don't move as fast they don't shoot as fast and she can kill, she level into an elemental skill tree that where lets her do elemental damage up the fucking wazoo. You know, just destroy enemy shields in seconds as she does electrocution damage with her phase walk. It's, you know, it's great fun. And then, on top of just the gameplay and skill points and all that, all four characters play somewhat similar, but they all have different action skills. There's uh, Roland, the most boring, who just throws a fucking turret out, and he, his skill trees aren't very good. They really don't affect gameplay that much, except giving stat bonuses to weapon types. And that's not that great, but they'll fix this class in Borderlands 2 with Axton, who actually has a useful skill trees. <laughs> and then there's Mordecai, who is much of the same blandness, boringness, who has a fucking... He's a drunk... But he has a badass bird, Bloodwing, that homes in and, and kills targets automatically. His skill trees are much of the same boringness that, well, Roland is. And then you have Lilith, the best character in all of Borderlands. The Siren, who's a badass who phase walks. While phase walking, she's invincible, invisible, moves super fast, and has a super... Blast, phase blast when she goes into it, a phase blast when she goes out of it, and you can level and do elemental damage while doing in phase blast. You can heal while in phase walk, I mean, and you can link extend the length of the phase walk. It's just crazy how much you can do with her. She is the most broken character in Borderlands 1 and one of the most broken characters in all of Borderlands. <laughs> But fun nonetheless. And then you have Brick who punches things very, very hard. And then what comes with weapons is the elemental types. I guess I should have talked about this when I was talking about the weapons. But it makes sense that I'm talking about elements with Lilith and everything like that. There's 
fire damage, which does a lot of damage to flesh and non-shielded enemies. And then there's shock, which does a lot of damage to shielded enemies, but not so much anything else. There's corrosive, which does a lot of damage to armored enemies. Again, they'll fix this in the next game. I'll explain more in a second. And then there's explosive elemental, which just nukes everything. Again, it's not as great as it will be in Borderlands 2, especially with the Unkempt Herald. But, fire damage is probably the most effective in this game. Shock, second most, because it takes on the shields. Corrosive, really, you don't know when an enemy's armored, because there's no bar that says armored like there is with shield. It's just red. In the next game, they'll fix that, and I'll explain that when I get there. But for now, it's red instead of being the yellow that it is in Borderlands 2 and that makes a lot more sense so and corrosive really isn't used that often because the only enemies I can think of that are armored are the Lance in their late game in General Knox DLC only for the most of the game you're just fighting shielded enemies with no armor so fire and shocks all you need explosive just does extra damage but it's not as powerful as, as it is in Borderlands 2 but the gameplay hybrid is great fun, it works well, and it's just awesome and addicting because you level up and you level up and make your characters better, you can try out new combinations of skill trees, and with the extra 11 levels that they added, which goes up to 69, ha ha ha, I think, I think it's the max level in this game, you can do crazy combinations of skill trees, and then also... The action skills, the gun gameplay, the hunt for loot, you want legendaries, you want pearlescence, it's just fun. You farm loot chests and you can get crazy orange guns, and the orange guns are legendaries and they do crazy things, crazy, crazy things, that there's a whole other video talking about what legendaries can do, but for now they do special things, and in this game mostly all they do is a big stat bonus. They don't look that unique. They don't have that many unique features except for like ammo regeneration. But for the most part, they just do more damage. But the gameplay is amazing and the best part of the game. Finally, I think I should talk about the DLC. And for the most part, it's fun and harmless. You know, Dr. Ned's fun little zombie romp. Not much to do, just some extra missions to do, really. A new little world to explore. There's not much added. Um, General General Knox added quite a bit more. More missions, a bigger world to explore, a new vehicle. Um, and probably the best <laughs> loot mission possible. You have two minutes to loot as much as you can in Fort Knox. Uh, the, the armory after beating General Knox. And that's fun. You can do that twice in, in any playthrough of the DLC. And that's awesome. Um, the story is funny. Um, overall, I like General Knox more than Dr. Ned's. Just because there's more to do. It's fun. More fun. The only thing is the one highway system is kind of a drag to, <laughs> to drive through. And the lack of fast travel in DLC areas is really bullshit and really annoying and I didn't mention this in the other parts but the fast travel system definitely gets better in Borderlands 2 in this game it's kinda ass <laughs> but whatever also the map is terrible I should have mentioned this way way before but I didn't and I'll mention it now but Ocarina of Time the game that came out in 1997 had a better map system than Borderlands, which just copied Oblivion. But Oblivion's map system was ass! And Oblivion, it made more sense because you were adventuring and it was going for realism. And you didn't need to find anything, really. Where in Borderlands, you have to find specific stuff. And the map is very confusing. And there's walls everywhere. And I should have mentioned this before, but I didn't. And I'm mentioning it now, but it's bullshit! Back to the DLC. Um, Claptrap's Robot Revolution is a great send-off DLC. It really, really is. 
It really amps you up for Borderlands 2. Miniac, the boss, is fucking hard as balls. But going through all the DLC characters and, you know, seeing General Knox again and Dr. Ned again, it was fun. It really was fun. Um, and I forgot to mention about General Knox, but General Knox added um, the raid boss, the first one in Borderlands history, Cromorax. And he's very tough, like all the other raid bosses. And he's the only one in Borderlands. But, who cares? <laughs> They're supposed to be tough. But also, General Knox added 11 levels or 10 levels. And then there was a free 9 level upgrade in Borderlands. Just as an update. And then, General Knox added 11 more levels, I believe. For purchasing it. And then there's the absolute shit Mad Moxie's Underdome Riot. Boring arena-based gameplay. Monotonous. Super drawn out. Really, five, five rounds of five waves It per map, per arena. And there's three arenas, and all you get is a fucking skill point for doing it all. Easily the worst DLC, I think, in Borderlands history. Boring, repetitive, and killing enemies, you don't even get experience. I guess it's fun for the challenge, but you don't get good loot. You don't get experience for killing enemies. It's definitely not worth $10. I've played one arena, and I was drained and didn't want or wasn't even able to do other arenas because of how mentally draining the first one is. Because of how boring and long it is. They'll never really do this again, but they do have arena maps in newer games in Borderlands 1, or in Borderlands 2 and the pre-sequel, but I think they're made much, much better than Underdome Riot was. As a send-off to Borderlands 1 before I'm in the video, I'd like just to say that it's still a fun game, it's still a good game, but it was obvious, obviously going through growing pains. This is the first of the series, first game in the series, first game of its type, really, you know, mixing RPG, Diablo loot systems, stuff character skill trees and, and FPS and guns and rarity all of these variables mixed together it's hard to build a universe around that but they managed to get enough universe in there that the sequel expanded upon that dramatically and I can't wait to get the Borderlands 2 just because of how well it polished the formula it polished it to a degree of perfection and there's still issues with Borderlands 2. But if you play Borderlands 1, not only does the story have more emotional impact in Borderlands 2, but you can appreciate the gameplay value, the advancements, the improvements, the UI improvements, let alone the dialogue improvements, the 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 voice acting improvement isn't really there because the voice acting was already really well done in Borderlands 1. But story-wise and everything else-wise, gunplay, gameplay, um, skill trees, all characters' skills are pretty important. The skill trees are all fun and useful. Uh, there's no Roland character that's just boring and shit to play as. They're all good in Borderlands 2. And it's just really polished Borderlands 1. And it's not like Borderlands 1 was a turd being polished. It was a, a dusty gem in the dirt. And Borderlands 2 just cleaned it off and made it shine. And I can't wait to get to Borderlands 2. Thank you for watching my Borderlands 1 review. This has gone on way too long, but I love this franchise.